little known extremist group is suspected in Sri Lanka's Easter bombings, but chances are they did not act alone. US officials have identified a key operative in the attacks who may have ties to global terrorism and ISIS. Three churches and four hotels were targeted on Easter Sunday. And within the last few hours, the official death toll has risen, now standing at least 310 confirmed dead. And the government has announced Tuesday will be a day of national mourning. With dozens rounded up and arrested, a state of emergency has been declared and the government has made an official apology for failing to act before the attacks, even though it had multiple credible reports from intelligence officials in Sri Lanka, India and the US. Well, for the very latest, CNN's Will Ripley live in Colombo this hour. So, Will, it, it seems in terms of government screw-ups, this one is beyond colossal. The intelligence was right. The system totally failed. Hey, John, I'm having a little bit of trouble hearing you because of the ambient noise out here in, the, in our signal. But I will tell you that uh, it is a somewhat chaotic and busy scene here. I mean, look out on the streets compared to what we saw when we arrived here in Colombo last night when the streets were empty and that nationwide curfew was in effect. That curfew was lifted within the past several hours. And now uh, there is traffic in uh, in this neighborhood, which is a short distance away from St. Anthony's Shrine, which is one of the churches that was targeted by the what the government calls suspects in these suicide bombings. They say they've identified six suicide bombers and one of them hit a church not too far from where I'm standing right now, which is why it was surprising to us when we passed by this shrine here in a neighborhood near the church. And despite warnings from the government to avoid you know, this kind of public gathering due to safety concerns and the possibility there could be other suspects out there, even though they've already arrested dozens of members that they say could be tied to a terror organization, possibly inspired by ISIS, according to the U.S. But these people are unafraid. They are here. They are praying for the more than 300 people who were killed in these horrific Easter bombing attacks, attacks that sources say bear all the hallmarks of international terror. Tonight, a state of emergency in Sri Lanka and a race to track down a terror network before it strikes again. In Colombo, the bomb squad performing this controlled detonation of a suspicious van near St. Anthony's Church, one of the sanctuaries targeted in a wave of deadly bombings on Easter Sunday. This new video shows a man state TV calls a suspect in the St. Sebastian's Church bombing. Church officials say a bomb in his backpack. One of six suspects wearing backpacks seen walking into churches and luxury hotels just before a series of eight explosions rocked this South Asian island nation. U.S. and Indian intelligence agencies had warned Sri Lankan authorities for days a local Islamist group was plotting an attack. The government apologizing for the massive intelligence failure, promising to compensate victims' families. This is attack attacking everyone, definitely. And, um, uh, this aggression this doesn't have any, any explanation. Interpol and the FBI are now assisting as investigators uncover evidence of what could be a much larger terror plot. Police found 87 detonators at a Colombo bus station. They diffused a six-foot pipe bomb on the main road near the airport. A U.S. official tells CNN the attacks are ISIS-inspired. Suddenly came a big sound with a big noise and the uh, broken glasses and uh, dust. All the people are shouting, weeping, uh, and uh, uh, we can't realize what happened. Bomb after bomb, city after city. It was a terrifying Easter Sunday across Sri Lanka. The primary targets, four hotels full of foreigners and three churches full of Christians. One blast rocked St. Sebastian's Church at the end of Easter Mass. A thousand worshipers ran from the horror. Lifeless bodies, blood-stained pews, debris and human remains propelled through the sanctuary into the streets. There were children, there were women and all close by and all were blown off almost. So we have more than 100 people who were killed on the spot. The violence reminiscent of Sri Lanka's bloody 26-year civil war. The fighting ended 10 years ago next month. Tonight, a new threat putting this entire nation on lockdown. Normally busy streets, empty, a nationwide curfew in effect, and growing fears an international terror group may be silently plotting its next move. And that was the scene last night when the streets were empty, which is what makes the scenes today so remarkable. I want to chat briefly with Rosary Fernando, one of the, one of the folks who's out here. 
Is there any fear of being in public areas right now? You're so many people gathered together uh, to pray, and yet it was people who were praying on Easter who fell victim to the bombers. Uh, many people are died in uh, on that day on Sunday morning mass. So more than 220 people died on that. Uh, are you afraid? Are you afraid to yeah. gather here in public? Yeah. Are you, is there, are you fearful of gathering in public? Gathering in public, okay. Uh, otherwise, the peop, uh, today is the Tuesday. We are mourning the dead peoples. Yeah. We are praying for that one. Rosary, thank you very much. Okay, okay, so, uh, obviously, people out here, uh, John, uh, gathering despite the fact that they have been warned by the government that there might be more suspects out there, but they say they need to be here to show their faith and solidarity with those who were killed. Will, thank you. Will Ripley there, live with the very latest uh, from Colombo. Thank you, Will. To Washington now, Bob Bears, CNN's intelligence and security analyst and former CIA operative. Uh, so, Bob, before this weekend, this local terror group, NJT, best sort of known for mouthing off and vandalizing Buddhist statues, uh, now there's this new reporting from CNN's Barbara Starr, amongst others. The U.S. believes it's identified a key terrorist operative in the attacks in, the, in Sri Lanka and has initially concluded that person has connections to international terrorism organizations, including ISIS. This is according to two U.S. officials. Is there any way these guys in Sri Lanka could have made this jump from you know, amateur hour to the big leagues without the help of ISIS or Al-Qaeda? No, there's absolutely no way they needed help. They're, the group is too small. Uh, it was well coordinated, six bombings, and one of them involved two suicide bombers. All the detonators went off as far as we know. The explosives were full, full explosions and, and so forth. And it was just too well coordinated, too professional to be anything other than a group like Al Qaeda or the Islamic State. They could not have done this on their own. That then leads to the question, just how big is this threat from ISIS? You know, the Trump administration about a month ago was dancing on the grave of ISIS when U.S.-backed forces liberated the last piece of territory controlled by the terror group. I want you to listen to the Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, speaking on Monday. Here he is. We've taken that threat down substantially. The destruction of the caliphate was important and it mattered, and the, just, and the takedown of these threats from other geographies as well. Um, but sadly, this evil exists in the world. So I guess the issue here is what is your definition of substantial? Well, he, he's misinformed or just propaganda. I mean, this group, everybody, anybody who knew the Islamic State or even Al-Qaeda knew that they were going to strike out somewhere else at a soft target. They weren't going to die with the caliphate. Uh, it's some, there are franchises out there. It's an ideology. Uh, it, it continues on. And as long as there's conflict in the Middle East, this this group is going to be around and you can completely wipe them off the map in in Syria and even Iraq and they'll still exist in various parts of the world. Uh, we're hearing from the far right, uh, especially now that you know these, these were Christians attacked, you know, apparently um, with the help of ISIS or Al Qaeda, Al Qaeda rather. Um, the uh, leader of uh, France's National Rally Party, Marine Le Pen tweeted out, my thoughts are once again with the persecuted Christians around the world. She said those who died on Sunday were targeted for their faith. Over at Fox News, the headline at dotcom reads, Sri Lanka Easter Massacre highlights how Christian persecution is on the rise across the world. But do the numbers actually support that claim? I mean, because overwhelmingly the number of terror victims are, are Muslims. Oh, absolutely. There are hundreds of thousands of them died in Iraq and Syria. And then, you've, then, then you have Christ Church as well. So, I mean, it's, you know, very few churches have been attacked. She's, Clopin has forgotten Paris was just an attack on a concert. It had nothing to do with Christianity. It had to do with the West. But, you know, going back to your point, uh, so many more people have died in drone attacks, oh, the war in Syria and even Iraq. It's, it's, it's silly to, 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 you know, Christianity against Islam. It's this, you know, this clash of civilizations that the far right is pushing that, you know, we have to defend ourselves against immigrants, against Islam is going to invade Europe if we don't do something, which is just, that's fascist propaganda. I guess more immediately, uh, the concern is how, you know, despite repeated warnings, the Sri Lankan government simply missed this, are unable to stop it. Uh, listen to what one government minister told CNN's Ivan Watson. It's a shock to the whole country, but uh, we will also apply shock therapy to ensure that uh, terrorism will be eradicated. 
You know, he said it was a shock to the whole country, but here's the thing, it, it didn't come as a shock to everyone, not even close. Uh, intelligence services in India and the US told Sri Lanka of the threat in early April, officials said. Uh, one memo compiled by Sri Lankan security officials was so specific that it even gave a list of suspects in the run-up to the holiest day of the Christian calendar. The warnings actually increased in frequency and urgency. Take a look at the April memo. It details the house number and the cross street where the group's recruiter could be found and the times he would be there. I also have reporting from the New York times that there was evidence of a growing Islamist threat uh, way back in January. Police uncovered a huge stockpile of weapons. How can such precise information be out there and not acted on? Well, it's going back to the Sri Lankan government is still suffering from the civil war and there's still ethnic divisions there and you know it's 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 been on the verge of the civil war breaking open again and the police services aren't sharing information. I mean, it's, it, that's why the Islamic State, if in fact they were behind it, picked Sri Lanka, knowing that they could move a lot of people in and recruit a lot of suicide bombers and it wouldn't come to the attention of the government. Harsha De Silva, who serves as a minister within the Sri Lankan government, uh, told CNN this attack was not the result of bad intelligence, but rather what we have here is a failure to communicate. It was not a failure of the intelligence apparatus. It was a failure of implementing uh, what had to be implemented. Um, so the question is, why was it not done? And also, the prime minister was uh, unawares. He was kept in the dark. Uh, the acting, or rather the state minister for defense uh, was uh, not aware. And uh, the president was on a private visit overseas. It's incredible what the president was overseas, so he didn't tell the prime minister what was going on. <laughs> oh, the country's got problems. But, yeah. you know, stovepiping existed before 9-11 when the CIA failed, failed to tell the FBI about the two hijackers, potential hijackers in San Diego. So let's be fair about that. You know, it's, it's intelligence services often don't coordinate. But this is especially egregious when they've identified suicide bombers by address and apparently by name. It's just, it's egregious. And I, you know, I'm not sure how you cure it there, but it's clearly a very dangerous country. And there are more bombs out there that are still missing, I understand. And, you know, it's not a good place to hang out in hotel lobbies. Very, very quickly, if you fail to implement the intelligence, then the intelligence has failed, right? Well, I mean, the people collecting it, I, you know, you got to, yeah. you know, they're, 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 they're doing just fine. It's just they don't have a way to transmit it through the governments. And we don't understand the political divisions in Sri Lanka, which would prevent this. But clearly, they better reform themselves so they're going to be in a lot more trouble. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you. Good to see you. Thank you.